What's going on EDC people and what is our journey today? Another Civivi. This time the Civivi Picaro. First let's get some stuff out of the way. EDC Journeys, that's the channel you're on right now, that's me, I'm Bob, and I'm trying to build my subscriber base. Help me get to 500 subscribers so I can do a giveaway, you can do that by subscribing if you're not subscribed, if you like my content. Now let's get this out of the way so that the camera can focus on what we're talking about, which is this here, CBB Picaro, Picaro, Picaro. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. P-I-C-A-R-O. So, let's talk about the specifics of this little guy. Well, actually, it's not so little guy. He comes in at... He... Did I just give it a gender? Uh, it is 9 inches in total length with a 4-inch blade and a 5-inch handle. So, 4 inches, 5 inches comes in at 4 ounces or 113 grams and let's just double check all that to make sure I am not mistaken by doing a quick measurement 4 inch handle I mean blade 5 inch handle that makes 9 inches overall I am outside guys so you can see the umbrella from the patio table uh, shadow right here and it will shift as the sun moves. Bear with that. Also bear with the screaming children. There's the four ounces by the way. Uh, as COVID-19 is still a thing, the school nearby has all of the uh, PE classes on this street riding bikes up and down the road so you may hear screaming and F-35 planes, trains and automobiles but I like natural light, I like being outside and I just think it makes for better photography for the knives for the cutlery okay first thing I want to bring up and uh, it has not much to do specifically with the Picaro, Picaro I'm going to say it both ways now every time because I'm not sure I'm, I'm self-conscious about what I'm saying. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the Civivi Fracture in profile. I think that that should be pretty self-evident uh, as to why. Uh, you will notice the pocket clip is on the left-handed side uh, because I'm actually pra uh, practicing tr or I'm trying a an experiment of carrying this slip joint. Uh, this is the Civivi Fracture. It's a slip joint. Uh, I have a review on it. I will try to either put a little link right here or link it at the end of the video. Uh, but I carry it in my left hand pocket, so I was trying the pocket clip on that side. So ignore that. Uh, but you can clearly see the family resemblance on these two knives. They look an awful lot alike. We'll take this away for now. It'll come back in a little while. So, speaking of the blade. This is obviously a um, black stone washed uh, D2 blade. It's got a hollow grind from about the hole down. There's a high swedge here uh, at about the midpoint of the hole. You see that? Uh, it also has thumb studs. They're calling them floating thumb studs. They don't move, but uh, they do kind of uh, float, I guess, in the middle of that hole. Uh, and it also has a finger choil or a forward choil, which makes also for a great sharpening choil. And while we're looking at the choil, I will point out to you, see that little silver line right there? My, my camera will focus on it. See it right there glinting? That's where the blade, when closed, comes around 
and hits the hits the hits the hits the pin to close. It runs on phosphor bronze washers, which is nice for hard work, which is exactly what this knife is intended for. Uh, why is that nice for hard work? Why wouldn't I want ceramic bearings for hard work? Um, well, two things. Uh, number one, ceramic bearings uh, are more open. Uh, even if they're caged, the the bearing, you know, the the dirt and grime and whatever I'm cutting and dust can get into the uh, works and gum it up a little bit. That's number one. And number two. Technically, um, bearings can be uh, damaged. So if you're really working hard with this, you're not likely to, de uh, you know, there, there's no balls inside of there that can get damaged or, or dented. And on the point of it being a work knife and the phosphor bronze washers, compared to bearings, uh, bringing that point up again. Um, in addition to what I mentioned where you can damage the bearings or gum them up, um, the washers have more surface contact with the blade in, in a more tight fashion. So theoretically you should have le uh, far, you know, the chances of any blade play are significantly reduced and yes there is no blade play or lock rock on this knife um, on this particular knife but uh, the, just in you know how do I explain this the the bearing when you have ball bearings it's just those balls that are touching the blade inside here um, which typically is enough, but if you really are getting into hard work or, or grimy work, um, you, the washers are far more supportive of the blade. I believe when I did a review on a, um, I can't remember the name of the knife now, but it had a recurve on it, it had a, an axis lock, I'm trying to remember the name of it, I think it was a, like Elite Tactical. Um, and I, I beat the heck out of it for the review's sake. It was a one. Of, it was a knife that was uh, given to me. Um, so because it was mine, I chose to uh, do all kinds of things like baton with it, and that had ceramic bearings. Now I'm not suggesting you should baton with a folding knife whatsoever, but I was going to the extreme just to show people things and, uh, on that video. Maybe I'll try to remember to link that too, if not put it down in the description. Um, in the end, the knife is still functioning. However, it makes a rattling noise when you open and close it because I believe I may have damaged one or more of the ball bearings. All that having been said, yes, it's phosphor bronze washers, um, which is fine. They, you know, they're worked, once they're worked in, you, you barely notice that it's not um, something like bearings. It, it, look at that thing fly right out. It's it, as if it's assisted because Civivi does such a great job with tuning their detent. And I, of course, I fail that right as I say that. Um, the hole, obviously, is large enough to do a reverse flick or a spidey flick. Um, wow. Fail number two. I don't usually use my thumb for deployment on any knife. Actually, I oftentimes either it's you know find that it's a flipper tab, or I use the reverse flick if at all possible. So I'm not exactly the best thumb flicker. Um, however, obviously that is possible. It is a liner lock, and you do have full steel liners that are skeletonized. You can see in the light there, see those little triangles upside down, little pieces of pizza, it looks like. Um, and that is both on the, is it on the lock bar side as well? Yes, it is. So they do skeletonize on both sides. So for the 9-inch knife, that's how they come in at 4, at, uh, four ounces. The handle material is G10, but they refer to it as a rough G10, in that it is. 
um, it almost you know by by eye looks like a maybe almost micarta or a some kind of woven material right but no it is g10 just just done in that way it gives it a very grippy uh texture um and and again that that lends itself to the hard work and hard to use uh ability of the knife it is a first i should tell you that this knife is is loaned to me by neves knives this is the last knife I have to do um, in the package of knives that they sent me this last time. And why I'm bringing that up now is because I want to point out that this knife was recently sharpened by Jared of Neves Knives. So, not only would it have come down to an acute edge and been very slicey and sharp to begin with, especially being a hollow grind, it also has pretty much a professional sharpening edge on it and it is very very slicey uh i was breaking down cardboard with it the other day and uh, the other day it was actually just yesterday and it, it it made quick work of it it was very very good uh you know so a combination of factors take a look the blade is nice and straight you have a deep carry pocket clip, flat top screws, it is reversible or ambidextrous I should say, and you even have a lanyard hole. This is I believe called the Desert Tan, there are several different colors available like CVV always or typically does. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a really cool uh, offering, another really cool offering from Civivi. Ah yes, here comes the next class of school children biking up and down the road. Uh, so yes, you already saw the deployment is very easy and good. It doesn't take much effort to uh, break the detent and then bam, it flies right out of the, um, right, right out. The choil, as I mentioned, it not only has one, which is great, it's a decently shaped one so that there's not much danger of slipping forward, especially on that extremely sharp edge of Jared's, but inherently also makes a great sharpening choil. Wow, there's a lot of children going by right now. I wonder if they like knives. <laughs> um, okay, so... Let's see here. Uh, in the middle of the road, I you know, it doesn't have a flipper. So if you like flippers, uh, well, that could be a problem. But for those of you who prefer just the thumb studs so that you can get more or optimal contact or not have uh, the flipper tab hanging down in the bottom, this might be something for you to look at. That having been said, it does kind of have the profile on the handle where it could have had a flipper because it almost could have been hidden inside of there but that's neither here nor there it doesn't have a flipper it has the hole in the thumb stud do you think it needed the thumb stud with that hole you know uh, i mean i can tell you that when you hold it in the basic saber grip your thumb falls here on the jimping in that little ramp the jimping is there but it's um, it, it works, but it's it's just it, it's very smooth, so it's not the most um, effective jumping, I should say. Uh, the thumb hole or thumb studs are kind of coned in shape, and if you look, they have rings on them so that you can easily catch your finger and flip it out. And again, it flies right out. That's a big blade, and they and they make optimum use of it in that handle. You can oh my gosh, these children! Uh, the joys of filming outside. Uh, okay, that having been said, what else did I want to tell you? It 
from what I could see, I pulled up information on Civivi's website and other websites just so that I could make sure I showed you and told you all of the things that are really relevant. Um, it looked like the price was $67. At one time, that may have been a great deal for this knife. In fact, this, I believe, is, as far as Civivi's concerned, meaning that they put out a lot of knives, so... Um, it, it, it's one of their more, I guess, old uh, offerings, meaning that they've put out a lot of knives since then. Um, that's not a difficult statement to say because Civivi puts out a ton of knives right now. I mean, it seems like every other week we're coming out with a new Civivi. Um, and hey, that's fine because mm, uh, everyone I check out seems to be pretty decent in their own way. Uh, there could be some that I haven't seen yet that I don't know about uh, that are that have problems but you know between the everything from the backlash to the elementum to the Picaro to the fracture um, they even have uh, the fixed blade uh, elementum coming out they have the riffle I just did a, a video on, uh, a countless I could go on and on, the, the natter or whatever, um, the brazen, the, there's so many, I'm not, you know, no, I, I couldn't possibly remember all of them, but my point is that this knife, I believe the pricing might be slightly outdated for themselves. I mean, um, knives from, you know, a, as the company's learning that what we want, and offering better and newer models uh some features of you know they're coming out with knives that you can get uh that fee that are a little bit more desirable at a lesser price than 67 dollars 60 only you know nearly 70 dollars for this knife it seems to me to be a little bit expensive for civivi uh and d2 uh, most of their budget uh, knives are coming, you know, I say budget, but really, Civivi shouldn't be called a budget brand anymore. I believe Sencut is actually... Civivi is made by We, which is a more premium end knife. They are all made in China, but under Wii's umbrella is Civivi and Sencut, and I, and I believe that's it right now. And Sencut is their true budget line. Civivi, I think, was going to be, but has kind of developed into more of a um, value brand, really. I, I, don't, I don't know what you would call the line, because uh, they, they aren't using terrible parts, and, and they're built quite well. The, the overall fit and finish of most of these knives are nearly, you, you know, bet, what you should expect for the price you pay, honestly, better than you would expect. Uh, and they do, even on these older models, pay attention to things like rounding off, chamfering, um, access to the lock bar. You can see it has that kind of like scalloped jimping on the liner lock. Not my favorite um, uh, form of jimping or, you know, gription on, the, on, a, on a lock bar like that. I find it to be a little bit, you know... If you're opening and closing your knife a lot, I find it to be a little bit annoying to my thumb. But that should that could just be me. Uh, but access to it and ease of grabbing it is is there. It's it's easy to do. Now, as far as action is concerned, you know these. Well, okay, you unlock it, and it pretty much drops to your thumb. And from there, it, you either wiggle it or push it. The, and as the washers, you know, if you first buy this knife, the washers are obviously not going to be worked in enough yet to do that. But the more you open and close the knife, the more polished the washers will get and the more um, smooth and glass-like it will feel. As I look at the at uh, the design of this knife, and I'm sorry I keep whacking this tripod, um, I'm wondering if maybe because of the hole they should have nixed the thumb studs, you know, not because 
I don't like thumb studs, but because they inherently do can get in the way of cutting. However, as I'm looking at this, you know, if you're gripped up here, which is what you usually do when you're doing hard cuts, they're really not in a bad spot. But maybe they should have gone with a flipper over the thumb studs. Or maybe they should have just gone with just the hole. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess it's a preference thing. Um, it is... Uh, that swedge gives a nice uh, kind of push away effect as you so the hollow grind allows you to have the thin metal as high as possible until you get to the swedge at that point the swedge kind of acts as a, as a push away for the material if you're cutting through cardboard for example it's going to go you know through stop focusing on this it's going to go down or up the blade and separate at the swedge it's kind of, do you understand what i'm saying kind of like a um, a zipper or a, a v imagine if i'm pushing this down it's going to go it's going to separate let's see here one thing that is definitely different on the blade of the fracture uh, is because it's a smaller profile uh, it looks like they have kind of a flat before the swedging um, and either way the nice part about it is it does give some extra reinforcement up here towards the tip so when you're doing tip work you have a little bit of extra um, steel there to, to reinforce your tip however when you get to the actual tip 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 it is very acute it is very pointy obviously it is a thin knife um in fact let's grab the calipers Do -do -do. I don't know if the microphone is cutting out the sound of these children or not. I'm going to have to edit this. I really hope I don't have to refilm this. Um, okay, so the blade height. Oh, I'll do it. Let's see here. Well, you know what? Conveniently, I'll go in the hole to the apex. It's 0.68 inches. So you've got basically a little over a half an inch of hollow ground cutting blade before you hit the either hole or swedge line if i didn't mention it already it has the typical um svv design pivot cover and here's the the adjustment pivot and Again, here's another example, you know, of, of Civivi doing a great job. I'm a little late to the to the show on this on this model, so that's partly my fault. But it just goes to show you how well Civivi does in in not only learning from what they put out, but learning from what the community is asking for. Because as I look at this, and then I look at things like the um riffle in the um i'll never get the names right maybe the brazen or the nader n n nader or something keen nader um I'm, i notice little tiny details um, from the handle material to the adjustable pivot screw being a little bit more um aesthetic look uh, you know uh, than just the than just a raised torx bit um, also the steel it looks like they are going away from d2 this is d2 but it looks like they are going away from d2 in favor of sandvik steel uh, mostly 14 c 28n i like that a lot personally um, some people may or may not some people might love d2 and that's a choice you can make and if you love d2 here's a model for you so essentially, 
I find that this knife is a nice offering from CVV for a long work knife. It is comes down to a very thin edge to do great slicing. Um, you'll notice it is a drop point, I guess, um, shape. It has the kind of neutral-ish bulbous handle that we've come to um, know about uh, and, and expect from Civivi. Um, I'm going to pause this for just a second because the kids are leaving. Okay, we have temporary temporary reprieve from, from the PE class going up and down the street yelling. Uh, yeah, so that having been said, you know, my as far as the, the bad, um, my biggest gripe about it would be that the price point doesn't reflect uh, their current models. Um, I think that possibly you might look be seeing a price, uh, you know, or I would hope a price drop on this down to um, at least somewhere closer to what their other models are going for these days. Um, a lot of their newest models with you know the best of uh, technology are cheaper than $67 so that's one thing just to take into consideration. That having been said this is one of uh, not many knives that are that are this long and made of such a hard material steel with grip on the handles um, it with a hollow grind like this what I'm trying to say is that it really does the job pretty well um, as I said I broke down some cardboard for recycling yesterday and it was not an issue whatsoever and again, I'm going to pull out the fracture so that you can take a look at both of these together. Uh, there's clearly differences slightly. Uh, you can see that because the fracture is a shorter drop, it does have a flat section here where this doesn't, and it just goes to the swedge immediately. Um, I kind of like the fracture's swedge and flat look a little bit more, but... I can, you know, it's ob I can, I know why they didn't opt to do that with this because it wasn't necessary, and uh, when it comes down to it, it this would be more effective uh, to do the job. Um, that having been said, how do you feel about the thumb studs on this guy? Let's put this up here for just a second. I look at this and I wonder, could they have just left the thumb studs off altogether? Should they have put a flipper tab on? Or just gone with just the hole? Although as I as I hold it in hand and really look at it from a downward point of view, when you hold it in the forward position, which is probably what you would do if you're you know pushing down on cardboard or whatever. Um, you know, the thumb studs aren't going to get any more in the way than your finger would. And it does kind of line itself up with the blade and plunge in a way such that as you slice, it, uh, the thumb studs really wouldn't be in the way. However, I just think it kind of looks a little strange. Do you? Or, or, I'm not sure. Maybe it would have been a good idea or a cool idea to have a removable or adjustable thumb stud to give you the option to either take it off, move it to a different location, or um, or or whatnot. I know a lot of people like the fact that it does not have a flipper tab though because as uh, people say we we get flipper fatigue um you know you get better contact without a flipper tab swinging down and around however you know again take a look at models like the riffle where it's they, they've now come to a point where they know they have the technology to make minimal flipper tabs and maybe they could have done something where the flipper tab came down and around and was hidden inside of this handle. I don't know. I, you know, it's just a thought. Um, I think that 
the draw the biggest drawback on it is the price point um, and personally I, I'm not a huge fan of the rough g10 handle what I am a fan of is the action the sturdiness and frankly just the geometry the edge geometry of it for such a short blade it can cut really well and the same thing could be said is for the fracture by the way you know for for just such a little knife uh, that they do their hollow grind you know their, their edge geometries are done so well that really it's not so much of an issue it is neutral uh, for the most part, there's no, you know, finger grooves or anything dictating where you put your hand. So, uh, again, access to the lock bar is easy. And you can see, look at the phosphor bronze. It, it just, it, it's not difficult at all. Just because it's not on bearings, don't let that fool you. If you're, if you're, if you're under the mindset that you have to have uh, bearings to have good action or smooth action even <clears throat> this well, you know when i press that over this nearly drops and then from here to here maybe needs to be smoothened out a little bit more or used a little bit more once those phosphor bronze washers are just a little bit more smooth in this section it may be a drop more drop shutty than see once the second there's a little bit more tension on there because I released the lock bar, that's when it gives it a little problem. But let me see if I can do it off the camera for a second where I'm not going underneath something. Yeah, you. So you know when you're not on camera, I'll try to do it here. You know it can drop down. And by the way when it drops your thumb is 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 in that choil area so make sure that you're you know you don't want to be on the business end of that blade especially a neves knives uh sharpened blade <laughs> uh so your finger gets hit right there you let go and if you really wanted to with a little bit more pre uh, effort you can get it down there no problem it still amazes me though how you know how easy it flies out there you know i i would demonstrate cutting some cardboard for you but really there's no point it cuts right through it and doing it under the camera really isn't going to show you much um let's do some size comparisons here's the fracture Looks like I only have some spider codes with me right now, but uh, here's the spider codelica. I'm trying to line it up by pivot. Uh, let's see here. We'll take this way, and I'll show you the shaman. That might be a better size comparison. Actually, the Picker, Picaro, Picaro is a little longer in the handle and a little longer in the blade than the Shaman is. Isn't that interesting? However, um, obviously the Shaman is a much more heavy duty and wider knife. Um, and finally, here's the Para 3. Yeah, longer in all the dimensions against the Para 3. In conclusion, I do like this knife as a work knife. It's nice and long at 9 inches. You get a good reach with a 4 inch blade. You're going to have some legal restrictions in some areas because of the size of the blade. So be careful and know your laws. Um, obviously the edge and geometry work pretty well. If it were a little bit of a taller blade, you would get a little bit more out of it. However, uh, the geometry works. And of course, Jared's sharp edge makes it even that much better um i just went and did a little photo shoot while the sun was out to post some pictures at the end of this and uh packed all my stuff up realizing i never finished the video so that having been said nine inches four and five 
D2 black stonewashed blade, hollow grind, the ambidextrous liner lock, phosphor bronze washers. Pretty cool. You, my only gripe really is the price point at this point, considering the competition with themselves. Other than that, this knife is comfortable and you can seriously uh with that drop point blade to get some good work done and you can actually use it it's it's you know because of the angle it's at you can get a good purchase on top of there and do some nice utility and draw cuts with that tip so and it comes right down it does come right down to that nice acute edge so um and, and i'm not a huge fan of the way the g10 feels other than that i do like the knife and that is the Civivi Picaro. I want you all to have a good day. Thanks for tuning in to EDC Journeys for the overview of the CVV Picaro. If you enjoyed the video, hit thumbs up. If you like the content, consider subscribing. Thank you.